Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do uh, in context assembly design. So basically create um, a component inside the assembly where the uh, parameters, the dimensions of it are uh, related or referred to the uh, other parts. And using that, we want to see how to uh, animate a spring under a deflection. So a spring when it's basically uh, expands and then shrinks. So uh, here I have a uh, guide that is fixed and then I have the sitting place which can go up and down. So between them I have a constraint of concentric where I lock the rotation. You can see that symbol here that means locking the rotation, right? So if you look here I lock the rotation so when it goes up and down it cannot rotate and if that's the case, uh, I do not really need this coincident as well. But here, I just did it so I make sure these two are parallel. Because when you lock it, they will be locked in the orientation they have. And it does not necessarily mean these two faces could be parallel. So here, um, uh, if I suppress this, it's still uh, not going to have any effect. You see, it goes just up and down. Because to begin with, these two parts were parallel. So now I'm going to design a spring between these two right here. I'm not going to bring it from outside. I'm going to design it right here while I can see the rest of the assembly. That's called in-context design. And I'm going to show you how to design it so you can animate the deflection of that. So here I go ahead and insert a new part. And you see it has created this part for me. And uh, for that part, I can go ahead and uh, basically start the sketch on one of the planes of one of these parts, right? Or uh, so I can have that in place, basically, uh, constraint. So for example, I can go to this guide and, right, I can go to this uh, front plane of that. So the sketch is going to be right there. And now what I will do is I will um, create a line which is between these two surfaces. So you see this line is already fully defined because I designed it such that it's between these two uh, plate, plates, right? Between these two surfaces. And so when I move this part, then the length of this line will automatically change. And that is the essence here for uh, showing the animation of the spring. Then I create the spring here instead of creating a helix and make the a circle follow the helix. I'll use the twist method for sweep to create that. And all it needs is a line instead of a, um, a helix. So with that one in place, I go ahead and uh, let's see, I made this line. Now I go and draw the uh, section, the cross section of the wire of the spring. And so again here, look, I put the center of this um, coil on this plate so it doesn't move and then I give it some dimension maybe 0.25 and I provide this dimension which is like half of the diameter of the spring so maybe one and you see it's fully defined now so now I can take this and sweep it along this line with a twist that will also give me a spring so here I go with the sweep command and use this for my profile. Of course, you're not going to see anything right now unless I go to options and provide a twist and go with revolutions. And then let's say you see here, go with maybe six revolutions. There we go. So you see, I got my spring and uh, now the spring is made between these two. Now look, if I bring this guy down right now, it doesn't look like the spring has updated the, chain, the length of it, right? But look, if I just update, there we go. You see? Because now the length of that line that I uh, drew between the two plates is changing. Look, I bring it up. There we go. Right? So you see that update shows the deflection. But to show it better and animate it, we can do a motion study together. And let's go ahead and change the name of uh, this new part, right? So we should be able to rename the part and call it Spring, which is more meaningful. 
Okay, now that this is done, now I go to a motion study. And here I can move this part up and down. And as a result of that, the spring will also deflect. So one simple thing you can do is apply a, spring, a, um, a motor, right? So which is here. So you click on the motor. And in this case, it wants to go up and down. So we use a linear motor or actuator. We apply it on this top face or we can apply it on the bottom face. Doesn't matter in this case. And just make sure that the direction is downward, not up. Although, again, as uh, we want to use oscillatory motion, so it's not going to really make any changes. Now it says, do you want to provide speed or what? Or how much distance or oscillation or what? The good thing with oscillation, it shows the shrinking and expansion. So we go with oscillation instead of speed or distance. And then we say uh, how far it goes up and down. So maybe one and a half inches. And then with what frequency, so maybe um, 5 hertz, and then the initial phase shift, which we can have uh, basically 0, 90 degrees or anything, let's just keep it at 0, and we OK that, and now if we say calculate for me, there we go, okay, it is doing some calculations, and once it's done, let's take a look now, here we go. Right, so we can beautifully get the spring to deflect. Okay, so this is creating a, a part in the assembly. We call it a top down design in context design, and this is how we can animate a, a spring deflection. So, hopefully, this video was useful to you and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you.